Hey, Ted, how close are we? Holy shit, that's loud. What the hell, Ted says. Wow, there's a lot of gate on this mic. Holy shit. Ah, uh, not saying it. All right, um, automated mapping to large binary objects. Um, I want to say a couple notes, uh, a couple things before we start this. Um, Ted's running, should I'll be afraid. Um, oh, he's turning my game down a bit. Aha. Um, first of all, feedback. We've already had some people going to feedback.schmoocon.org, um, and please, we'd like more. Um, so as you're sitting here twiddling your thumbs between talks, if you've got a fancy iPhone or a G1 or something like that, by all means, please go there and fill it all out. It's pretty groovy. Uh, secondarily, um, these guys are going to give a talk. Um, I have a lot of respect for the, the team of folks that's up on the stage. Um, they come down from West Point. West Point's bringing, been bringing cadets down here for a while um, to learn about computer security. And uh, frankly, it's nothing but impressive. Um, there's a lot of academic institutions out there who pay some lip service to security, um, who write some papers once in a while, do a little bit of funding, uh, but it's not necessarily practical, and it's not necessarily pushing the ball forward, and it's not making a lot of smart kids. You know, It's not taking people out of college and, and making them be real security professionals and understand what the hell really goes on in the real world. Um, the program they have at West Point is fantastic. Um, it's a bunch of highly dedicated individuals who really want to learn about things and are doing some great research um, and, and more interestingly are willing to come to conferences like this and speak. Uh, which, you know, from a government perspective is fantastic. Uh, from an academic perspective, I think is great. Um, so I'm really happy to have these guys up here on stage talking about the work that they've done. So appreciate it, fellas, and uh, good luck. Hi, how you doing? Um, I'm Ben Sangster. These are my colleagues, Greg Conti and Roy Ragsdale. Um, this is my first ShmooCon, uh, so I come walking into the, the uh, hotel earlier. My colleagues are like, you got a pair of jeans? I'm like, no, I don't. You probably want to buy a t-shirt, because I, I guess I showed up in this, and they like, no, that's not really for this. <laughs> my, pur my purple shirt, so I'm no now the purple shirt guy. Uh, we're going to be talking to you today about uh, our research on, and work on automated mapping of large binary objects. Um, I, our views are, are not of, from the United States Military Academy or the government. There are personal personal research that we do back at the academy, um, and that's, and that's uh, we just had to throw this little statement up there for you. So what you're looking at on the screen right now is a uh, memory, memory dump from, or memory map from a computer circa 1980. Does anybody out there recognize what that memory map might be from? Yeah, there we go, Commodore 64, ding, ding, ding. Winner of the, you get the purple shirt, so see me, <laughs> see me afterwards. That's right, um, Commodore 64. Um, this is kind of like our motivation, though, to be able to look at a, a large binary object, look at the memory offsets, and, and know with some certainty that what we're looking at is a specific uh, fragment type. Uh, binary objects, um, not so much looking at files, but we're looking at large pieces of, of data, whether it be um, a, piece of, a piece of memory, whether it be uh, a, slice of, a slice of data from our hard drive, um, there's, you name it, if it's a bunch of, bunch of bits thrown together in some type of collection, that's what we're talking about, and very large. We're talking um, meg 10 megabytes, 100 megabytes, even up to a gigabyte. So our goals were, uh, for our research was, were to uh, accurately identify regions within an arbitrary binary object. Uh, we want to do this quickly, be able to run our utility quickly and come up with an answer as quickly as possible, provide a framework so that you might be able to add to our work, make it that much more usable, all this being automated, as well as creating some type of test data set that gives us some confidence as far as what we're doing, as far as our identification is concerned. The current state of that is, is bin, our bin map utility, which will be released today. What you're looking at right now is the conventional way of analyzing a binary object, specifically in this case, a file. 
analysts might look at this hex editor and start looking, trying to identify particular regions of interest. Um, if you look at the far right of the, the uh, scroll bar, you can see it's at the tip top of that file. It would take uh, many, many screens scrolling down, looking, trying to physically, visually identify something that we think is important. Um, we'd like to be able to automate this. Uh, take this to, taking this to this screen, uh, we're now looking at another, another binary object. We're seeing 400 times more information in this, in this screenshot. This was a 12 megabyte file. What you're seeing right now is two megabytes. Um, you, can, you can visually identify some, some points of interest, some changes in, some changes in the actual file, um, but we're still not able to accurately identify what those regions actually are. We know that they are ASCII text, some compressed image there, uh, some other data structures. We want to be able to automate that, be able to pinpoint within a, a binary object what those regions are, what those points of interest are, so an analyst can, might be able to either rule out some region or jump to a region and look at it a little bit harder. So what we've done is we've come up with some, some functions. We're going to start, start using functions that calculate some values, graph those values, and then hopefully provide us some type of um, output that can pinpoint us in our binary objects and see some transitions, some points of interest, so we can physically jump to those and start giving it a little bit more of a harder look. And I'll turn it over to Greg now. So as, as Ben said, I mean, we're, we're overwhelmed with data, large files, gigabyte, uh, gigabytes or more. And in many instances, we're constrained to a very tiny uh, textual view. So what we're trying to do then is have this automated means of uh, identifying areas of interest. So you saw in the picture before, there were very distinct visual regions. There was, that was a Word document. So there was text, there's embedded images, and it can be very, very large. So going back to our map example, how could we create a map that you throw any giant file at and it would tell you what, you know, try and fingerprint uh, areas in there so you can then take a look at them. And here's just a, a start at what those fragments could be. What would you want to identify in a large number of zeros and ones? So we've broken it down into three areas, or three main branches from this idea of a, a binary uh, fragment we're trying to identify. High entropy, uh, that's roughly uh, equates to randomness, so highly random things like uh, compression and encrypted regions in a file might be of interest, keys, uh, use your imagination. Uh, medium entropy, things like machine code, human language, data structures of uh, some, some type or form all have uh, some degree of structure, um, and can we identify those? There are techniques that can identify languages, English, French, Russian, and you name it, can we apply those techniques? So then you could throw this large file at and out will pop a map. That's the goal. And here's just an example. I just edited the, uh, the Commodore 64 memory map, but just the idea is what offset in this large blob does ASCII text in English occur? It, it, where, do these, uh, where do these identified fragments begin? Where do they end? So then you can hop to them, take a look, and if it's of interest, great. If, uh, if not, you can uh, just quickly uh, jump over it and move on to the next. So that's the idea. And I want to point out that uh, Eero Carrera did some, some great work on this, uh, basically looking at the idea of randomness uh, or entropy and uh, using it just to pull a key out of kind of background noise of, of text. And uh, there's definitely, so we can point you to the blog post out there, it's very interesting. So how do we do this? Well, we have this function. We're using uh, entropy today, and it, for each of these fragments, there's uh, a range. There's, uh, we, we took a look at, well, wh wh what value ranges do we want to identify of being of interest? But even better, what we're, where we're going with this is we just don't want one function, entropy. We want many, many tests that can confirm or deny our identification of a fragment uh, within these files with high degrees of accuracy. So what we're presenting today is entropy, but we have a, um, but we have some other t techniques where I'll show you, I'll list for you and show you where we're going with this. So here are just an example of four different um, types of fragments or types of data we might want to identify. The first is just a, a large file created by a Perl random number generator. Uh, and next is an AES encrypted Word document, uh, an ASCII text document. Is that a question? Yes. Uh, preferably at the end. Uh, we're kind of in turbo talk mode. Um, 
The, uh, and then finally, a BMP, which is a, uh, a single color BMP, so a large uh, bitmap file, just a single color, so very low, low entropy, low entropy because it's a large number of a single value. And at the upper end of entropy would be these random number sequences. So this is just uh, the equation. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, but the other techniques, I think, are of interest, Hamming weight, index of coincidence, these are other statistical techniques we can use, uh, as well as the traditional pattern matching that exist. So which of these can we apply to identify fragments in this plug-in framework where I was going to demonstrate? So here's just one example. The, so the entropy, you feed it a certain sequence of bytes. Well, it actually turns out size matters that a small uh, number of bytes, it, it's inaccurate, it's unstable. And then as the byte sample gets bigger, then it gets more and more stable. And that's what this shows. The, the horizontal axis is the size of the sample taken from the start of the file. So notice it goes down. So entropy is going down, which means, and Sergey uh, also have to thank is a mathematician, and he doesn't like equating entropy with randomness, but forgive me today. Um, that entropy uh, drops initially, and uh, it's because the header of the file, that, that's a, also a picture on the right of, of the file, and you can, the basic idea is you see that war, large white region in the middle? Well, that's padding, that's all zeros. So it's a very, it, it, there's very little randomness, there's no randomness in that, so the, the entropy drops. And then as you uh, move forward and you get into the rest of the file, the entropy shoots, shoots up. But what that forces us to do is you have to have a reasonable sample size to start getting accurate results. Because here, we're, what we're trying to do is identify fragments or types of data within this large binary object. So at the top is uh, the Perl random number sequence, the blue line. And notice it shoots right up tonight, and there's nice degrees of separation. Right, so the random stuff shoots right up to the top. You could create a window that says, okay, between seven and eight, let's call that compressed slash random. Uh, the text in the middle is uh, four, it hovers between four and five. The uh, purple line, which we saw before, which is the Word document, shoots right up too, although it took a, a sample of about 3,000, I'm sorry, 2,500 to get up into the seven to eight range. And then finally, the solid BMP, which is very little randomness, drops right down to zero. So it's these, these, the separation allows us to fingerprint things. And recall, this is just one technique. There are other techniques, other statistical or pattern matching techniques we can apply. But this is the idea. And if you don't do it right, like this shows, um, if, if the sample size is too small, then you can have values crossing, and then you get, uh, you get incorrect results. OK, Roy. Right. Who wants a shirt? <laughs> really? I mean, somebody stand up. Or don't. That's my advisor's shirt. All right. There we go. So what I'm going to show right here is um, I'm going to buy him another one. All right. So the first thing we want to do when we're looking at, uh, we chose to focus on entropy. And you saw how there were different ranges. So we want to be able to kind of calculate a good range. We don't want to just be guessing and say, oh, about 7, 8 is possibly compressed or encrypted. We want to have pretty exact results. And so we're going to look at some statistical stuff for that. All right. And so if you look in here, we have a directory of text files. It's just 250 text files from textfiles.com, uh, plain old text files. And so what we're going to do, wrote a script that um, in Python that goes through and will take all these files and it will, oh, uh, Python, Python. There we go. So right now, it's taking this directory of files, could be any type of files. We started with text files because that's a very simple um, type of fragment that you'd want to look for. It'll go through, it'll make a copy of them, just give it a plain file name. It'll go through and then um, compress them and encrypt them, and then it'll go through and calculate the entropy values for those. So if we look at um, our text files directory now, you see it's kind of jumbled around. You have some new um, directories and some interesting files. So if you look in um, generic files, see here are all your files, still 250 files, just with um, generalized names. Uh, if you look at, uh, then it also makes these nice 
CSV files that have um, all the, a bunch of different statistics for these files. Um, for every one of the files, so we'll go through and we'll be able to calculate an average for the average random, uh, adram en excuse me, average entropy for uh, text files. So then we'll go into Excel and run this sweet macro. And it works, which is awesome. And um, so what do you have here? It starts off, it um, brings in, so this is as big as I can make it right now. But um, so you can see here, it brings in all the information from those CSV files for each text file. And then it runs some descriptive statistics, nice from Excel, that gives us a mean. So this is the average entropy for a pretty decent sized sample of text files, as well as a standard deviation, which um, using statistics, that'll give us a good range that we can go off of to build an entropy plugin they'll go through. And so we have the same thing, not just for our plain files, but also for um, compress, compress files and um, our encrypted files. And then also if you go back and it makes a nice big chart for us, you can see in the middle, where I'm wiggling my mouse, that's a, all the blue, those are the text files, um, just plain without any compression or encryption. You can see they have um, around that 4.4 uh, entropy, and then at the top you have the compressed and encrypted. And so you can see this very clear separation between what's a text file or what a text file looks like in terms of entropy and what a compressed or encrypted region would look like, which is what we're trying to do with these functions is be able to separate out, separate out to the different characteristics what we're looking at. And so we took this plugin and we wrote a tool, um, binmap, that allows you to Write up a plugin real quick. It's real simple. You essentially just write um, the function that you want to, as you scroll through the file to do, and sends back the regions. So if we run TypeNet Python, so right now, um, see we have three plugins in there. Right here, here's our entry one. The other two are just kind of throw away, so I can get used to learning Python. Um, so just repeating regions and printable text. So now, let's throw it at the entropy at just a file just to show you um, the effective window size. And so you have entropy, window size, and then here we go. All right, so this is showing with a low window size of 10, just looking at a big picture, that it's very low, which is not what we would expect. It's a PNG, so it should be high. Um, if we make the window size, like we said, a value that we, um, gets past that first uh, uncertainty, you'll see it goes to high and medium high telling us what we'd like uh, about that file. So now I'm gonna turn back over. But the key point is that we were able to come up with some very specific exact ranges and you can throw that script then at any directory of files. We can throw it at a directory of pictures to find out statistics for uh, the right ranges for different types of images and other pure fragments. And so slideshow. And so I didn't show you this, but it's extensible. You can just drop in any um, properly uh, coded up uh, extension, and it'll show up then as a flag. Uh, you can run it with multiple plugins at once, and it'll highlight out the different regions. And then you can see here's how we got the uh, different ranges, which you can see down here for um, possible written language or compressed and encrypted regions. So uh, just to wrap things up, we're uh, trying to improve the framework. I mean, with any framework, there's going to be bugs. But uh, the link at the bottom, binmap.googlecode.com. If you want to download it and play with it, Roy would be happy to. He's a developer. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, or while you're wandering around the con. Let's break that, oh, that one's taped off, I guess. It's pretty rough right now. So really, please give me feedback. And uh, if you have any ideas for other cool plugins or ideas for what you'd like to identify as you go through the file. So, and, and that's one thing, I mean, part of that idea of what's interesting, you know what's interesting, and you know what, what you've found, what you want to find. So please, if you can give us some, some ideas on that as we wander around uh, over the weekend, we'd love to hear them. Uh, we also have some other te techniques, from pattern, including pattern matching and other statistical techniques, but we know we've got a lot of uh, clever folks out there. We'd love to hear your ideas. Uh, and we're also going to extend this into multiple dimensions using data mining techniques, uh, such as clustering and distance metrics, because that seems like a natural extension. So uh, with that,
What are your questions? I don't bump. And that, that, was that Toby that had a question? I can't. Okay. Yes, chat audio. How we doing on time? Uh, any questions? Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Not so far away. Hi. Do you have any thoughts on efficiently distinguishing um, encrypt encryption from compression? Well, we, uh, I know Sergey uh, Bradis is in the audience. We consulted with him on this. He's very, been very helpful. Um, I, from our discussions is that it, it, believed to be, it can be done. The real question is how efficiently can you do it? Uh, we weren't, from our tests, we weren't able to tell. But I think that there are tests that can do that. Um, but uh, we haven't, uh, we ourselves haven't been able to do that. Because that would be really interesting if you could. And that's where the idea of going into multiple dimensions, if you find something, a distinguishing characteristic that you can hook into statistically, then it would pop right out. Uh, we haven't done that, but we're heading that way. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Well, right now what Roy just did was build a framework to just create, used AES encrypted, right? So AES this time. But what we're, we're continuing with this, and his, his uh, ability to take these text files and turn them into many different things, it, it's, just, it's just like a one-line change in the code that we could come up with every, you know, every a, a wide variety of compression techniques, a wide variety of encryption techniques, and then take it from there. So uh, you, I, you're going to be posting the code that generates these data sets. Uh, We, we don't know at this time. Uh, I, I, that's where we're heading, and, and I'm not sure if entropy alone is enough. And we're trying to stay away from signatures, like certain file formats, because we're trying to look focus more on the data, uh, the structure of the data itself, because headers can lie. So I th are we, uh, uh, I, we're out of, uh, about out of time, so we're going to, being a turbo talk and all, we're going to be out in the hallway. If you want to talk to us about it, we'd love to hear what you got to say, and we thank you for your time. So we got nine minutes to the next talk, which will be Shane Locke.